Would you believe me if I said I'm tired? Hello, everybody. How are you doing on this fine Saturday? Welcome to a very special presentation of whatever this is live. <laughs> That's Surprise Witness TV. <clears throat> Probably like 20 or 30 minutes ago, I like breathed in coffee or ice water or something. And um, I had like a coughing fit. <clears throat> so I'm still recovering. You know when that happens? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Reese. So welcome everybody. Let's see if I can give a few shout outs to a few of the members here. I see Nola's in the chat and Harlot Oscara. That is a funny name. Who else is in here? Okay. Let's see. All right. I lost my spot. Uh, Bonnie. Hello. Manders. Hello. Simply Bell. Hello. Sheila. Rando from Iowa. How are y'all doing? This is live. Hello. 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 Uh, yeah, so I just received just literally kind of like hot off the presses, uh, the transcript for the court hearing. If you're somehow new here and this video made its way across your timeline for some reason, um, I investigate into public matters of public concern. One of the issues of public concern that I have looked into was the Britney Spears conservatorship. I was a big part of the Free Britney movement. I've looked into other conservatorships, high profile, including Bam Margera. Bam Margera's conservator, aka guardian, just depends on which state you are in based on what they, you know, what they're going to call it. Um, <clears throat> the guardian of Bam Margera, I ended up looking into her and I found all kinds of stuff. Namely, somebody was already kind of like in her care. She had taken responsibility for this person's recovery, you know, addiction recovery treatment and all that. She had taken financial responsibility for it. And this woman, Amanda Rabb, actually died in Lima's financial, you know, responsibility or whatever. So uh, not only did she die at 25 years old, but when Lima came out to read the autopsy results for this woman's death, she did not accurately report on the cause of death or the drugs in her system, which of course got me started ringing alarm bells. And she did not like that. And so she has gone on a spree a spree of abusive, malicious litigation across the country in order to, I believe what she's trying to do is number one, silence me any way she can. I wouldn't be surprised if she eventually tried to settle or something like that, but basically like spend me into bankruptcy, I believe is my opinion. Um, or she's trying to scare other people from covering this story. Whatever the case may be, she certainly attempted and did successfully at least for three months to uh, and she did successfully chill my speech which is exactly what these anti-slap laws are in place to stop right so slap s-l-a-p-p -P, this is not legal advice you need legal advice please go get legal advice from an attorney licensed to practice law in your jurisdiction i am not giving legal advice to anyone at all ever thank you um, so a SLAP lawsuit is S-L-A-P-P, -P, it's like an acronym of sorts, and it stands for Strategic Litigation Against Public Participation, right? Strategically filing a lawsuit to silence someone or to stop someone from participating in the public discourse, public discussion, matters of public concern, public interest. So the government, at least theoretically, and certainly the Constitution, says that people who are members of the public should be allowed to participate in public things. That's why we have the freedom of speech. That's why we have the freedom of the press and all of that. So whenever somebody, a private you know, citizen, tries to sue another private person um, over an action that would really just be a First Amendment right, well, that's whenever these slap lawsuits come into play. I'm not a slap lawsuit expert, okay? I'm not giving legal advice, and also, I don't really know a lot about them. I am going to make some videos about them. I'm doing some more research and all that. I definitely just won one such um, lawsuit, but I'm not an expert. Don't take any of this, you know, writing it down for your school or anything like that. Don't, don't use this in court, all right? This is just me blabbering about what I know. I'm not an expert in this. But so in this case, Lima was trying to get a restraining order and what specifically she wanted the restraining order to do other than the regular stuff that a restraining order would do, which is stay a hundred yards away from her, you know, don't contact her, 
don't go places where she isn't. So she wanted that. But I think the most important thing, and namely what she really wanted, was the other part of her request, which is to stop me permanently from posting about Lima or mentioning her or her sisters or her husband anywhere on the whole entire internet. First of all, the fact that she went to a California court to do this was preposterous because she, I live in New Jersey. I've been to California from time to time, but I don't go there a lot. And I was certainly not planning on going over there anytime soon for any reason. I know plans to go. So it was already very wild to me that a judge in California could even have the jurisdiction to tell me what I can and cannot post online anywhere in the world from my house in New Jersey. That was just a mind blowing proposition to me, first of all. Um, but for whatever reason, I guess they thought they could. And unfortunately, it's not like you can just violate these orders. Like if if she would have got the order, first of all, she was requesting attorney's fees. So I would have had to pay her $20,000 and it would have stopped me from being able to mention her anywhere online. And it's like a very big restriction on my speech. Not only is it a big restriction on my speech, but it is a huge restriction on the right of public access and the public kind of forum, right? Because we all are supposed to be able to talk about our opinions and exchange ideas. Now, I know in the year of our Lord 2023, it doesn't often feel like we can actually do that. But in theory, that is how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be able to just talk about our ideas and our opinions whenever we are clear that they that they are just opinions, right? Well, <clears throat> back in the 90s in California, the legislature in the state passed a law um, you know, called the anti slap law. I don't know the actual full name of it or whatever, but anti slap. So, what was slap? It's a strategic lawsuit that somebody files whenever what they're trying to do is make the government step in and take away one of your rights that you have the right to be doing, right? So, Lima wanted to settle her private dispute with me by getting the government to stop me from being able to mention her name. That's what she wanted. That is a slap lawsuit. And a court has now ruled this. Um, so the anti-slap statute was put in place in the 90s. And California has a very robust framework for this anti-slap regime. Um, in California, they really want to protect the speech. And a lot of the cases that they do decide do end up falling in the favor of free speech. So because this is a very strong anti-slap statute. So the anti-slap statute, again, this is not legal advice. I really am not an expert in any way on this. Okay, I don't know. But from what my understanding is, um, the anti-slap statute comes into play and it's supposed to deter these abusive, malicious types of lawsuits. It's supposed to deter it, right? So what does the anti-slap statute do? Well, if I could, if a, any defendant, me, I was one of them, but if any defendant under the slap, you know, statute, if they um, invoke the authority, <clears throat> excuse me, the authority of the slap statute, and they say, um, like me, your honor, this is this lady's trying to infringe on my free speech rights and I have not done anything illegal or wrong. Everything I'm doing is in the interest of the public and it's all public records and it's all public public, whatever, whatever my arguments were. Y'all heard me read, you know, the thing the other day. Um, if it's supposed to be in the public and you would bring in this slap statute, this anti-slap statute and say, this person is trying to deprive the public. This person is trying to deprive me from my rights and all that. If the defendant is successful and, you know, wins on the case or whatever, they would get attorney's fees, for example. So I would get attorney's fees from uh, Lima and some other stuff or whatever. Right. But in order for the slap statute, the anti-slap statute to come in, uh, the defendant, which was me in this case, would have to prove two prongs of the statute. Right. There's two different things. Well, actually, the defendant has to prove one and then the plaintiff has to prove one. I'm not getting into the statutory framework here. All I'm trying to do is set up like what you're about to kind of see, right? Because they're going to be talking about prongs and stuff, and you're not going to really know what that, some of y'all will definitely know. I know a lot of y'all do know about the slap statutes even more than me, but some of y'all might not. So basically there's two prongs the judge is going to talk about. The first prong is I had to basically show this was, you know, public interest, right? There's like different uh, elements that you could theoretically argue. One of them is like, it's up for a decision um, in a court of law or in a judicial body. So people have a first amendment right to talk about issues that are up in the legislature or whatever, right? There's these different elements, but I could have, you know, proven whatever of these elements just to show, yes, this is an issue of, you know, first amendment concerns or, or whatever, right? 
Once I did that, the burden would shift onto the plaintiff, which in this case was Lima, for her to show some type of exception to the free speech. Like, no, Your Honor, what she's talking about is absolutely not uh, free speech because what it is is a crime or something like that, right? And crimes aren't free speech or whatever. Um, I don't exactly even remember what she did argue. I really don't. Um, because all I knew was I didn't do anything wrong. Everything I talked about was either opinions or facts. And the facts were from public records. I was always showing y'all where I got these facts from. So I just knew I didn't do anything wrong. So without further ado, I do have a little bit of a, um, I do have a little bit of a time crunch deadline today. I can't be on here for like, you know, that many hours today, maybe maybe more than one hours, but not that long. I've been on here for like hours lately when I do these lives. Okay. All right. So here's the transcript. <clears throat> All right. Superior. So the judge was, um, honorable William E. Weinberg. I think his name was Weinberger actually, but, um, to be honest with y'all, My hopes weren't the highest for the Stanley Moss Courthouse judges after what I had seen go down in the Britney Spears case, but I have to give credit where it's due. This judge was very fair and it it wasn't even like he was like siding with me, like favoritism type of thing. Like he let Lima's lawyer get out everything he needed to say. Lima's lawyer interrupted this judge in the middle of talking several times, as you will see in the transcript. <clears throat> But, um, and the judge just let him talk. Like he really, he was fair. He was listening to everything and, you know, credit where it's due. He hasn't been in the family division of Stanley Moss very long. I imagine this man is not going to be in there very long. I think he's probably going to get promoted to like the federal court or something because he's just like a real legitimate fair judge. And that's, I mean, I hate to say it. I was a little bit surprised, but thank God. I'm very grateful because all I needed was a fair judge. I always have said it. There's no reason to make up lies. There's no reason to go track anybody down or anything like that. I would never encourage anybody to do that. And I would actively discourage it. There's no reason because all we have to do is talk about the truth. I've always said that. I've always said that. But when you do that, you got to make sure that the person who's arbit arbitrating the truth or whatever, the judge, the arbiter or whatever, is also fair. Okay, so Lin Lima's lawyer, Benjamin Kanani, okay, <clears throat> so the judge comes in, matter number eight, so we were the last matter on the docket for the day, Lima Yevremovich versus Brittany Jareem Corville, would counsel please state their appearances, uh, Mr. Kanani is Lima's lawyer. Yes, good afternoon, Your Honor. Benjamin Kanani, appearing on behalf of Lima, is petitioner in this case. Uh, Lima Yevremovich, who is present at counsel's table. And Gooch is my lawyer. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Frank Gooch and Brandon Posovac, on behalf of respondent Brittany Dream Corville, that's me, who is also state, uh, seated to my right. <clears throat> and y'all, I did not know if I needed to stand up or sit down. Because, I mean, I know that the lawyers are supposed to stand up when they're talking to the judge, but I guess I never knew, like, does that mean the plaintiff and the defendant are also supposed to stand up when they're talking? I didn't know. I really did not know. And um, maybe somebody taught me one day and I forgot, but I, like, stood up and I was like, in here. It's like, I don't know. I just wanted to be, you know, in the rules of the court. <clears throat> All right. Good afternoon. Okay. So the, so the judge says, sit down. So we're here on respondent. That's me. I'm respondent. We're here on respondent's special motion to strike pursuant to the anti-slap statute. And also we're here on Lima's civil harassment restraining order. Okay. So that's the two things that we're there for, but we could not get to this restraining order until the special motion to strike was decided. So the judge wanted to decide that first. We're going to take up the anti-slap motion, and if it's denied, then I would determine what we're going to do, because the civil harassment restraining order is not going to be heard today in any event. So the judge is saying, we're going to talk about the anti-slap, but the civil harassment restraining order is going to require witnesses and a lot of time allotted, and it's going to be like a real, you know, kind of like trial, or at least an evidentiary hearing or whatever. 
<clears throat> so the judge is like, in any event, we're not even going to get to the restraining order today. So let's get to the anti-slap. And whenever he said this, if it's denied, uh, that made me freak out a little bit because I wanted it to be granted, right? Take up the anti-slap motion because I motioned to basically strike this whole thing from the record, just strike the whole thing because it is a slap suit. And the judge, you know, like spoiler alert, did end up agreeing. But at this point when he was like, if it's denied, I was like, because I all I also knew if it was denied, um, <clears throat> I still was not, I had never done anything wrong. I still could win on the restraining order thing and I would win. I would prove that I did nothing wrong under that statute and that nothing that I did was uh, deserving of a restraining order. I already knew that I could win it on the merits. But in order to do that, I was going to have to spend out probably literally hundreds plural of thousands of dollars. And I don't have that. I cannot afford it. And so it was going to put me in a position where, I mean, y'all are seeing in real time how they get you, how they silence you, how they silence people. I've made it a little bit farther than a lot of people could make it, but there's like limits on everything. Right. So he says, we're going to hear this anti-slap motion. If it's denied, I'm like, oh, please, God, I don't deny it. You know, I was freaking out, but it wasn't denied. He said, then I would determine about the restraining order thing because we're not going to be talking about it today anyway. And then uh, he's like, you know, is that what everybody's on the same page kind of thing? And my lawyer, yes. And Lima's lawyer, yes. All right. So the judge says, all right. <clears throat> so I did a review. Let me show you all what the judge looks like so you all can have like his image in your, ma in your mind. What's his name? Judge. I'll show show it to y'all. So this is the judge, William uh, Weinberger, and he's a little older than this now. I think this might be a little bit older of a picture. Like, you know, he doesn't exactly look like this exactly, but like you get the idea. So this is the judge. So this is the guy who's talking whenever it says the court. This is honorable judge. William E. Weinberger. Um, he was like a super lawyer and then um, became a judge. He's in the family court. He went to Stanford Law School, like, you know, solid in every way. So I am extremely grateful that I got a fair and reasonable judge. Thank God. Because, I mean, not everybody gets that opportunity, but thank God. I, I it was He was so fair and reasonable, honestly. He just let what Lima's lawyer interrupt him over and over and just stop talking and let him you're gonna see it you're gonna see it in the in the transcript okay so that judge he says so I did review all the papers the moving papers the opposition and the reply papers and I have a tentative ruling that I will provide to you and then I will hear argument. Okay. So he starts off by saying he's already read everything. That means he's read Lima's 200, 300 page declaration or whatever, you know, with all the exhibits. He's read mine. He's read the motion to strike. He's read the Kuchar, Brian Kuchar, the Linda Omar alleged statement, the alleged Dahlia Takali statement. He's saying, I read everything. I do have a tentative ruling. Tentative means like, you know, I'm pretty sure how I'm going to rule. Here's your chance to change my mind. And I will provide it to you and then I will hear your argument. First of all, with regard to me, my, uh, I'm respondent, respondent's objections to the declaration of Lima filed on November 9th, the court sustains the objections. So I'm not going to get into all these right now, but I think I told you all on yesterday's live as well. Um, Lima submitted this long declaration and in the declaration, she attached exhibits to the back, right? Some of these exhibits were declarations from uh, people. Uh, the people included Brian Kuchar, who she has colluded, conspired, whatever you want to call it, worked with, together with, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this guy, Brian Kuchar, and they both were witnesses for each other on basically simultaneous restraining order attempts in different states. They were trying to bury me in litigation to punish me 
for reporting on this story and giving my opinion on it and criticizing their actions, which I am allowed to do, but they were trying to punish me, right? So Lima had attached this guy, Brian Kuchar's declaration to the back of her declaration and to the back of her papers. And she had attached Dahlia Takali's declaration. Where was Dia Takali's? Who knows? Where is Dia Takali herself? Who knows? She goes missing. They put out, you know, uh, public requests to help find her. And then nobody knows where she is. I don't really know. But there's all these little declarations. And in them, there's all kind of stuff that you cannot put in court as evidence, right? So my lawyers had to go through each and every one and say, no, your honor, like this whole paragraph has to leave. This whole sentence has to leave, whatever. Like I said, I'm not getting all the details of it. I don't even remember what it was, but it was a bunch of evidentiary objections. Well, in order to kind of fight over that, um, Lima would have to file a response to the evidentiary objections or else they would just be probably sustained, right? You know, in, in court, uh, like TV shows or whatever, whenever someone's like, objection, your honor. <clears throat> and then the judge will either say overruled or sustained. Overruled means it's allowed into evidence. Your objection is dismissed, right? I'm overruling you. Sustained means, ah, good point, actually. Yeah, you can't put this in here. So this sustain objections means it doesn't get to count as evidence. So a lot of this stuff that out on the streets, you know, Lima might want to say, well, look at all the declarations filed, right? Like there's plant, there's, pl there's literally plants out here putting in Reddit or whatever. Look at this declaration filed by, by a victim of BJ Corville. The reason we have courts and evidentiary rules is because anybody could say anything. And as we have seen, they actually do sometimes say things that are not true or not fully true or not or lacking context by a lot or whatever. So you have to meet certain evidentiary rules. You can't just put anything in there. Oh, BJ showed up to my house and tried to K-word me. Okay, well, where's the proof of that? Because you're just saying it and, you know, I guess we could take your word on it, but what do you mean? Right? So there's all these evidentiary rules in court. Well, she files all this crap and then my lawyers file objections basically in paper instead of in the court instead of standing up saying your objection your honor they like filed it in the paperwork objection lima's lawyer did not bother to even respond back to any of these reject uh objections and so this is the court now ruling on the evidence the evidentiary objections that we made so the court sustains the following objections he said in some instances it might be the entire paragraph but whatever was in their objection is what i'm ruling okay so whatever was in our objection is what he's ruling on. Those are publicly available online somewhere. If you're really interested, you could probably go read them. So I'm sustaining the objections to paragraphs. So these entire paragraphs get taken out. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, false. I said the wrong thing. Um, I think this is paragraphs in um, paragraphs in my evidentiary objections, right? So it's like number one. I guess he didn't sustain. So we, so it's numbered paragraphs in mine. So he's like, these are all the ones that I'm actually going to sustain. Meaning none of this crap included in this list can be treated as evidence by me. So he had to take out a lot of stuff, a lot of statements. This person was running and this person was this and that and all this. I, again, like I said, I really, truly, I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, I'm reading the transcript right now for the first time. So apparently these were the ones in the paragraphs. Y'all could go match them up if you're really interested. If somebody's making a video, if somebody's reporting on it or whatever. These are the paragraphs that the judge said, yeah, no, this has to leave out. We can't have this. And it was the things that I enumerated in the following paragraphs or my lawyers. I didn't do it. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23. The judge said, do you need me to repeat those or did you get them? The lawyers are like, we got them. Okay. And then the court goes, but I have to say, even if I did not get rid of that evidence, and even if I considered it all of the evidence that I've seen, my tentative ruling would be the same. Okay. So what he's saying is, regardless if I considered that evidence or not, which I could not do because I kicked it out, my Ruling for the time being, my like what I think I'm going to decide, that's what tentative means, it would be the same. And it is this. <clears throat> First of all, to the extent that the respondent, that's me, is seeking dismissal on the grounds of lack of personal jurisdiction, his tentative ruling is to deny. Okay. 
So there was an argument that my lawyers had made about personal jurisdiction. And that's what I had kind of said a while ago. Like, it's kind of confusing to me how a court in California gets to just like tell somebody in New Jersey what they can say on the entire internet for the rest of history. Um, it's very weird to me. I didn't know that the arm of the law could reach that long. I guess apparently, I mean, you know, I guess apparently it does, but that's neither here nor there because I do think that the judge ended up making the right decision on the slap thing anyway, which allows me to get attorney's fees or whatever. But like he said, first, I'm not going to dismiss this case. I do have jurisdiction basically is what he's saying here. First of all, it was okay. So procedural thing. Um, he also said the fact that y'all filed this special motion to strike waives any objection you had to jurisdiction, which I don't understand really like fully the legal. I don't want to like speak on something I'm not fully 100 percent informed on on that. So I'll just read the transcript on that. Okay. Then he said, with regard to the special motion to strike. The tentative is to grant. So with regard to my motion to strike Lima's restraining order request with regard to my motion, the judge said, I think I'm going to be granting that surprise witness's motion, basically. He said, that is a two-prong determination. Remember we talked about those prongs? The determination involves two prongs. First, is the speech protected? And is it covered by the anti-slap statute? Okay, so that's the first prong, I guess. And if that burden is met, which is me, meeting me saying, yes, this is protected speech she's trying to stop, and the speech is covered by the anti-slap statute. If that burden is met, then the burden shifts onto Lima with the question of whether she has shown a reasonable probability of success. Okay. Again, I'm not an expert. I really don't want this to be taken as I like extremely knowledgeable. I just kind of read the statute and some articles online. I haven't really even read a bunch of cases about it. Okay. So like you should do your own research, please. But from the lay person understanding what I think this means, I have the burden first to prove it's protected speech. Then if I can do that, then there's still something else that has to happen. And that is Lima has to try to show the court that she would still win. Even though I could prove the burden, it's protected speech and whatever, like she could still win for some other reason. That's kind of what I understand this to mean. If Lima can prove that she can win on some other grounds, like this reasonable probability of success thing, I think like maybe it could go um, further to trial or whatever. But if Lima can't prove a reasonable probability of success on her lawsuits or what, on her claims, then the, then the anti-slap statute would make that case be dismissed out of court and it would uh, apply my attorney's fees and some things like that. So first, the judge had to determine. Did I meet my burden? Is this protected speech? Then the judge had to determine, did Lima meet her burden to prove that it goes above and beyond that, Your Honor, like, you know, whatever. Right. So first prong. Uh, the court understands under the cases, uh, under the cases, so he was reading the case law, it's a minimal showing of a prima facie case. I don't know what this means. This is like legal terms of art. The court is not weighing evidence in that determination. Okay, so then he says, with regard to the first prong, I showed that the restraining order request arose from acts in furtherance of constitutionally protected right to free speech as defined by the statute. And he goes on to, to say, in particular, um, her acts in furtherance of a constitutionally protected right were written and oral statements of writing made in a place open to the public or a public forum in connection with an issue of public interest. Okay. A written or oral statement made in a place open to the public. So an open social media forum like YouTube in connection with an issue of public interest. Okay. Yes. I mean, in my opinion, but also the judge's opinion. He says under the case law, um, and he cites Thomas versus Quintero. It was a 2005 case in the California Court of Appeals. And it says restraining order petitions are subject to a special motion to strike. 
Yes. So Lima's lawyer, I think, I don't have the papers in front of me, but I'm pretty sure I remember that they tried to argue that in a restraining order request, it couldn't even be subject to a anti-slap motion to strike. And it's like, well, yes, it can. I don't even know why they would even say that. So the judge is just reiterating for Lima's lawyer, who didn't seem to understand it, uh, civil harassment restraining order petitions are subject to a special motion to strike. Yes, they are. He says, in addition, she, meaning me, posted on publicly accessible platforms, YouTube and Instagram, and the communications involve matters of public interest. Okay, so this is the judge's ruling in a nutshell. She posted on publicly accessible platforms, YouTube and Instagram, and the communications involved matters of public interest, is what the judge said. The court, he tells you which rubric he used. They used a rubric from Weinberg versus Faisal, where the court noted there is a lack of authority regarding the definition of public interest, but it did provide a manner for determining whether an issue is of public interest and stated five factors. So the judge is saying, BJ posted pu on a publicly accessible platform, including YouTube and Instagram. Not only that, the communications that she was saying upon which this restraining order request is based, they involve matters of public interest. And then the judge says, here's how I determine what is a matter of public interest, right? Um, he's using another court's ruling from 20 years ago or so, 18, whatever. And that court said, you can consider five things when determining whether something is a matter of public interest. I'm just reading from the transcript here. He said it could not equate with mere curiosity. It has to be something of concern to a substantial number of people. Keep that in mind. There should be some degree of closeness between the challenged statements and the asserted public interest. So they're actually kind of related. Like you can't say like accusing someone of having, you know, a certain like disease is somehow okay because you work for that diseases organization no like you there's no link between why you would say that right there's you know for example um the focus of the speaker's conduct that's me the focus should be the public interest rather than a mere effort to gain ammunition for another round of private controversy and the fifth factor that that court was weighing on whether something is a matter of public interest the defendant, that's me, cannot have created her own defense by making the petitioner a public figure, which obviously I didn't do. She had already been viewed by millions and millions of viewers online before I ever even knew she existed. So obviously I didn't make her a public figure. In Weinberg, that's uh, this case right here where they had these five factors. They're trying to figure out what's a public issue because the judge has to basically explain how he arrived at his conclusion. He can't just say, oh, it's a public issue. Because whenever I appeal it or whenever Lima appeals it, whoever he decides for or whatever uh, against, when that person appeals it, the appeals court is going to want to know, what did you base your decision off of? And why did you say this? Right. So he's he's telling the judges and the public, the public as well, and other judges who might rely on this decision, maybe even himself in the future, what was going through his thought process? Why did he do this? And he's saying in this court case where they determined whether something is a matter of public interest and they gave us the framework, the definition, how to figure out if something is in the public interest, that court found that the issue there did not involve a matter of public interest because it was essentially a private matter between two collectors of, the judge says, I believe wine, and the communications were directed to a small group of other collectors. So there's this case, Weinberg, in that particular case, the thing that the person was talking about was not a matter of public interest because it was like a small, closed off niche group. Um, and it was a private matter between two individuals, et cetera. The judge says, but here the issues do not involve mere curiosity. Based upon the followers, it appears to be of concern to a substantial number of people. So the judge is just telling you, look, here's the puzzle. Uh, Here's the rubric. Here's the framework. Here's the things I got to consider. Whether an issue is of public interest. One of the factors is 
it's a matter of concern to a substantial number of people. The judge says, based on the followers, it appears to be of concern to a substantial number of people. And I kind of found this part to be a little bit vindicating because I don't have a lot of haters and things, but one of the things that the very few, you know, maybe like 10 to 20 haters that I do have, one of the things that they'll say to try to hurt me or like insult me is that I do all this stuff for clicks and likes or clicks and clout or clicks and views. And it's like, it's just not true because what that would imply is that I'm doing this for some type of like financial gain and benefit. If that was my primary motivator, why would I ever have left my job at Winston and Strawn? Why would I ever have left that big law job if my primary motivator was money? It just kind of is like that. That is not my primary motivator. But it's kind of been something that people have used against not only me. I mean, it's a very common insult. Anything for the clicks, anything for the views, anything for the clout. And it's like some people do stuff for clicks and clout for sure. But like I'm not reporting on this stuff or giving my opinion and commentary on this stuff for clicks and clout. I'm just I'm really not. But some of the videos have gotten clicks like the Amanda Rabb virtual reality hell part one. The first BJ investigates on this has over a million views and the judge doesn't think that's a bad thing. He said, actually, based upon the number of followers, it appears to be of concern to a substantial number of people. And that fits right into this framework on whether it's a public, uh, what is an issue of public interest. Here, this is the... The challenged statements on the whole have a sufficient degree of closeness to the asserted public interest regarding mental health, guardianships, use of technology by petitioner's business in treating mental health issues, and among others stated. I guess that means stated by me. Again, I'm not exactly sure about this sufficient degree of closeness prong, so I don't want to really speak too much on it and say the wrong thing. Uh, The focus of respondent's conduct, that's me, the focus of my conduct was on the whole on the public interest. So the judge is saying my focus was the was in the public interest. Like on the whole, everything I was saying on the whole is in the public interest. Not to and it was not the judge ruled. It was not to gather ammunition for a private dispute. Petitioner was at minimum, this is Lima, was at minimum a limited public figure before respondents post. So the judge is saying this isn't like the reason he's saying this is again one of the rules from that 2005 court is that I cannot have made Lima into a public figure and she was some private obscure figure and then all of a sudden I made her famous just to disparage her. No, like that's what the law says. That's what the not the law, the precedent says. And the judge is saying that's not what happened here. Like at at best, she was a limited purpose public figure before I ever even knew about her existence. She didn't thrust her into that category. So I did not thrust Lima into the public figure category. And the reason he's talking about that is, again, from that framework from the Weinberger case. The judge says, so in light of those factors... And the mandate to construe the law broadly to encourage continued participation in matters of public significance, the court finds that respondent met her burden. And that's me, right? I met my burden. So he's just saying the judges have the um, obligation, the duty to, or mandate, sorry, the mandate, they're mandated. He is mandated to construe the anti-slap law broadly to protect more speech. Why? Because the law was put into place, like I said earlier, to encourage continued participation in matters of public significance. So the court found that I met my burden. First prong, done. Moving on. The burden has now shifted to Lima. The judge says, with regard to the second prong, the court's tentative is that the petitioner, Lima, has failed to establish the probability of prevailing on her claim. She had the burden to present evidence establishing a prima facie case that would result in a judgment for her on the civil harassment restraining order claim. So Lima had the burden to present evidence establishing a prima facie case that would result in a judgment for her. She had the burden 
to present evidence establishing her case. That doesn't mean that it had to be necessarily admissible at that time, but somebody had to present something somehow, some way to show that Lima is going to be able to make an argument. Like she even could have said, like, I don't even want to say anything because like it's still in litigation or whatever, but y'all can think of y'all can think of things. And it's it's exactly the same error that she made in the New Jersey case is that she couldn't show the court what she was trying to claim or tell them that I was doing. There was no showing of a lot of the stuff she was claiming. Okay. She had the burden to present evidence <clears throat> establishing a prima facie case that would result in a judgment basically in her favor. She would have to show a knowing, this was what Lima had to show, a knowing and willful course of conduct directed at Lima. Okay, so we need to highlight a couple of these words. Knowing and willing is one of them. A willful, sorry, willful, willful, not willing. A knowing and willful course of conduct directed at Lima that seriously alarmed, annoyed, or harassed her and served no legitimate purpose and was such as would cause a reasonable person to suffer substantial emotional distress. Now, the reason that I highlighted these words that I highlighted is because it's not just the layman's term of like, oh yeah, knowing and willing, knowing and willful, course of conduct, no legitimate purpose. No, 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 no. These highlighted sections and other things in the in the sentence, all have legal definitions. Like there's a legal definition for what constitutes as a course of conduct. You will see why that is important in a second. But it's not just like, oh, what do you think it means? No, there's a lot of case law that has been decided on all of this stuff. What does it mean to show, right? What is knowing? How do you prove that someone knowingly did something or willful? What is a course of conduct? Is it two posts? Is it 47,000? Po Who knows, right? Like these things have all had to be decided. Okay. So the court says, um, this is the judge. I'm, I'm just reading from the transcript. This is the transcript. The judge said this live in court. He said, the court notes that section 527, whatever states that constitutionally protected activity is not included within the meaning of course of conduct. Okay. So what did Lima? Okay. Look, here we are. I met my burden. Thank you. Burden shifts to Lima. Cool. Where's Lima? She has to show she, she's got the burden now. She has to present evidence establishing a prima facie on the face case of civil harassment restraining order claim. And she had to do so by what? By doing what? Showing that I did a knowing and willful course of conduct directed at Lima that annoyed, harassed, whatever. The court notes constitutionally protected activity doesn't even count for course of conduct. So if it's something constitutionally protected, that's not a willful knowing course of conduct because it can't be a course of conduct. So this can't apply. That means Lima failed on her burden, right? You see the puzzles, the puzzle pieces. Okay. The petitioner, Lima, has not provided evidence establishing a prima facie case of doxing. She offered no screenshots or posts showing doxing, public disclosure of her address or other personally identifying information. And he says, and so, so first of all, she showed no evidence, but that's not the only problem. There's more problems for her. Respondent, me, stated in her declaration that she obscured and redacted such information and provided several examples of screenshots showing examples that that information was obscured. And that has always been my practice. Anytime I've ever shown an address on my channel, I it's always come from a public record. Always. And most of the time, I still block out addresses. Every now and again, I know that I've left in some addresses, but in those postings, they were business addresses. So for example, the United House of God Church that Lima established three days before Amanda Rabb died, the United House of God, there was somebody's address was listed as a business address on the public filings of that. I did not know. Someone else brought it to my attention way later on that the, whatever the address was that was associated with that church was someone's like, it was a residential address. 
I did not know that. However, that was already public. It was already public. Doxing is where you take someone's private information that is not public and you make it public in order to, you know, scare or threaten them. I have never done that and I will never do that. In fact, in fact, people have sent me private information that I will not disclose or discuss on this channel or any time. I would never use that private information. I pride myself on only relying on public information or firsthand sources that will come out and say it themselves or that I can use their name, like on the Tatum situation or the Vinnie Beetle situation where it's like, I don't know what they're saying is true or not because I wasn't there, but I'm telling you my source. You know what I mean? So the judge says, look, the girl didn't offer any evidence at all of this supposed doxing, but respondent did offer some evidence that she actually does redact this information. She also stated that her research, so here's another problem, a third problem for Lima's burden. Her research involved obtaining publicly available information and documents and redacting publicly identifying information from even those publicly available documents, even though such information was contained in those documents. So the judge is acknowledging here, show me a place where BJ showed, showed an address ever, first of all. And then if you can, I also need you to show me that it wasn't already a public record. That's what he's saying, in my opinion. I mean, that's, y'all read it. Tell me. Petitioner Lima has not. <coughs> Ugh, I had that coughing fit earlier. I'm still recovering. <coughs> so, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry y'all now it's like a dust bunny or something all right <clears throat> yes it's the solar flare i'm blaming <laughs> Woo! all right thank you for the super chat who gave that oh i can't read this name trials riles oh riley thank you very much <clears throat> vexatious litigation needs to be addressed when using court as a means to violate constitutional rights. It's true. <clears throat> this is a public matter that absolutely needs both lobbying for stronger legislative changes. I mean, yeah. I mean, I wish there was like a federal anti-slap suit for stuff like this. Okay. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like allergies or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> Vexatious. I got my favorite cup now. Okay. 
<clears throat> okay. So Lima did not provide evidence for a prima facie showing of stalking or harassment. The posts that she attached as exhibits, <clears throat> E and W, they don't show me inciting harassment. And my examples of posts on my social media corroborate that I didn't incite others. And I didn't. I never have incited anybody to harass Lima. I've be literally, I've begged y'all not to do that. And if you did do that, then you should face the criminal consequences because why did you do that? I didn't tell you to do that. Don't do that. There was one girl one time hmm, who was saying she was going to go and, and go to some, go do an apartment tour or something. And I said, don't do that. Do not. And I'm telling y'all, don't do that. I don't, I know it's like I'm beating a dead horse, but you're looking at, you're looking at why <clears throat> every time you see these disclaimers at the bottom, Every time you're like, we're all adults. Why does she have to keep telling us over and over 10,000 times not to do that? Like, obviously, we're not going to do it. Well, the reason is this, because even though I say it 10,000 times, they still use me. I'm telling people to harass them, which is a lie. It's not a true state. I'm not. I never have. Thank God the judge saw that. The posts attached as exhibits to Lima's thing don't actually show me inciting harassment. So Lima was like, she <clears throat> she told other people to, to harass me. But she said, look at, we looked at this yesterday. Y'all should go, uh, was it yesterday? Yes, we read the declaration yesterday, December 1st. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> sorry, y'all. That's probably why I shouldn't do lives. Okay. Um. Where was I? The post attached exhibit. Okay. She was saying I was doing stuff. And then she was like, just look at exhibit X for proof. <clears throat> then she would go to exhibit, then you would actually flip to exhibit X. And it was like, that's not what that says. That has nothing to do with that. Right. Like she was saying that I started rumors she was in a bleep jewel relationship with Adam 22. Look at exhibit X for the proof. And then you go to exhibit exhibit X and it's me retweeting Adam 22 about some lady with a soft white underbelly interview, nothing to do with Lima, didn't mention Lima, didn't talk about Lima, nothing about Lima at all in this tweet. But she attached it to her declaration to show that I was starting a rumor, quote, 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 that uh, her and Adam 22 were in a bleep you will relationship. I don't think that they are. I've never said that. I'm not starting that rumor. I'd never thought they were. That was news to me that I started that rumor because I didn't. <clears throat> But then you see the evidence she attaches on the back and it's me retweeting Adam 22 about something completely different. And it's like, that's kind of what the judge is saying here. Like the post attached in exhibits E and W do not show respondent inciting harassment, but respondents examples of posts show that she did not incite harassment. So Lima didn't meet her evidentiary burden of showing her prima facie case. Third. With regard to attorney's fees, <clears throat> the court sticks with its tentative ruling, that would be to dismiss the case, um, or strike, rather. Uh, it would find that I'm entitled to fees <clears throat> and would schedule a hearing for that to be heard by motion. He says, that's my tentative ruling. He goes to Lima's lawyer, if you'd like to be heard. Yes, Your Honor, thank you. <clears throat> so Lima's lawyer stands up, and he's, I guess, very upset. A thousand in the chat. Drop a red flag for Lima's lawyer, everybody, in the chat. Thank you. Mr. Kanani. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And also, thank you for these thousand people, because it does show that there is a substantial number of people in the public who are interested in this matter. It's an, a matter of public interest. <clears throat> so Lima's lawyer stands up. Drop a red flag for him. So first of all, now I'm being Lima's lawyer. I was going to do my uh, impressions, but my throat's sore. He said, I'd like to address the second prong regarding minimal merit. Okay, what I'm about to read is going to sound very confusing probably to some of y'all because it is, and I don't get it either, so I'm not even going to try to explain it. I'm going to just read what his words are and move on. <clears throat> he said he wanted to talk about minimal merit, which I haven't heard the judge say. I don't know where this terminology came from. No clue. The court stated that Lima didn't 
present evidence of posting of me posting Lima's address or screenshots of her personal information for the address of other or the address of other individuals. Lima's lawyer said, no, 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 that evidence is included in the original restraining order petition. <clears throat> so for some reason, Kanani did not understand the judge whenever the judge said, I read all the papers. So the judge already had read all this crap, but he's trying to make it seem like the judge didn't read Lima's declaration, like perhaps one of the most important documents in the whole case. <clears throat> he said it's not included in the declaration she attached to her opposition but it's part of the record and it's referenced. And that's a big part of the reason why uh, the court granted the temporary restraining order and why there are multiple, multiple. He likes repeating words. He says very, very like he doesn't um, have a strong grasp of the English language because he doesn't have <clears throat> like a robust vocabulary. Instead of saying something like monumental or immense, he'll say very, very big. Right. Y'all remember learning that? Okay. Granted an original temporary, so what he's, I guess, trying to argue, I think, I really don't know, is that because the first judge granted the temporary restraining order, then I shouldn't be allowed to get the case dismissed. I, it don't make no sense to me because that would basically mean no temporary restraining order could ever result in a slap action, like a successful slap strike. That doesn't seem like that's how it was supposed to be. So he claims there's multiple, multiple criminal investigations going on into me, which I am not aware of. I would assume if there was a criminal investigation going on into me that I would have been questioned by someone at some point, which has never happened. So I think this is a lie. I don't think this is true. Um, and if there is a criminal investigation going on into me, I invite them because I have not done anything criminal. So please continue your investigation. You will find what I found, which is not that I am a criminal. <clears throat> I'll leave it at that. So then her lawyer says, so that is a very disputed fact. I don't know what's the disputed fact for which we have not only evidence in our petition, but multiple witnesses who can testify at trial about that specific act. We have an investor in the courtroom today who has had his own personal information, contact information, and address posted online within the last month. And he has two young children who live there. I don't know who this investor, I, I, I believe based on what this man looked like to me in my research that it was Luke Rochelot. I'm not 100% sure. But because that's the only other person I could think of that it could be based on his address is on the guardianship application. But in my memory, I have always blurred that address and his telephone number out. And I provided evidence to the court that I did that. I have not posted that in the past month, though, at the time of trial. So I don't know who they're talking about that's posted this man's address. If that happened, go after that person because it certainly wasn't me. And again, there's no evidence for this at all. There's no evidence for this at all. We have an investor in the court today who had his own information posted online within the last month. Well, why didn't he submit a declaration? Like, that's what he was supposed to do. This is a disputed fact that Lima has tried very hard to attach evidence uh, of to her petition, but she can't attach the entire video. Um, and she does have screenshots there. So this is a long-winded way of saying, Your Honor, we did attach proof of the address doxing, which just, it just isn't true. They didn't, they just didn't. Maybe he thought he did, but he didn't. He should go check the papers. The court said, I'll let you finish, but I just want to say, and then he goes, sure. And the court goes, I did look at the declaration supporting the restraining order request. So he's putting it on the record. Yes, I did read that. So I still didn't see the evidence. Lima's lawyer, yes, it was a fairly long declaration. The court said, yeah, I may have missed it, but I didn't see examples of her personally identifying information. The lawyer, her address and her name are there in the exhibits. No, they're not. <laughs> I can take some time and bring them up to the court, but they're in the record. I mean, there's a lot of other reasons as well, Your Honor, but these are disputed facts, which 
that surprise witness, again, if the court in finding that this information was not provided, it is weighing the evidence because in addition to the exhibits attached to Lima's petition, she has third party declarations that also support the same proposition. But a lot of these are not admissible because they have been sustained, like, you know, gotten rid of or whatever. <clears throat> Lima's lawyer goes on to say, she has a number of individuals. What number? Who knows? This is how lawyers talk. A number. Could be one. Could be two. She has a number of individuals who are prepared to testify to that point. To what point? Like, there's no point. <laughs> what do you mean? These are disputed facts. There's people who, who random anonymous people who didn't bother to submit a declaration. They want to testify. We are talking about business investors family members, acquaintances and friends that she's known at this point for years. She's had drones come to her home and individuals come up to her, individuals, plural, this multiple individuals came up to Lima and spit in her face. First of all, I do not think that is true. I don't. Sorry. I think it's a lie. But let's say it's true. I didn't send anybody to do that's deranged. That's sick. I would never, ever do that. And I would never, ever encourage someone to do that. And in fact, if you did do that to anyone, including Lima, you just probably, that's a crime, girl. Don't do that. It's na First of all, it's nasty. Nasty. I don't have a drone. I don't own a drone. I don't know what this drone obsession is that these people have. I did not send a drone to Lima's house and did not ask somebody to send a drone to her house. If you did that, you should be the one that she's going after. She said somebody spit in her face and she can't provide a photo of that after it happens. Well, I mean, I think you probably could take a picture of yourself like with the spit on your face. If you really, I mean, if, I guess technically, I mean, I don't think you should, but he's like, she can't. Well, I mean, I guess she could. She could have snapped a pic. Her testimony is evidence and that is a disputed fact. Not to mention we have police reports that are technically hearsay until the officer can come in to testify. This is where he messed up because he was supposed to put them in there, but he didn't because he he had to present evidence that would be admissible at trial. And he knows it, but he was, I don't know why he didn't do it. If the court were to find these facts after an evidentiary hearing, which Lima is entitled to, this is where the lawyer said, but he was wrong. She wasn't. Then obviously an anti-slap motion or the argument that it's constitutionally protected speech can be raised again. And the judge is like, no, I understand that. So what <clears throat> Kanani is trying to say is, Lima is entitled to an evidentiary hearing. And what the statute, what the actual law says is she's not. One of the purposes of the law is to keep litigation costs for defendants like me who are being abused with malicious prosecution to keep the costs down. You're not supposed to have to go through any evidentiary hearings. You're not supposed to have to go through any discovery. If it's a slap suit, the whole point is to discourage people from uh, chilling speech and to help keep the litigation costs down for people who are defending their right to free speech like I am. So Kanani was wrong again and the judge told him. Kanani said we're not saying that uh, uh, that BJ would give up her First Amendment argument. What we're saying is Lima has presented facts to that very point and he said I can point them out to the court which he never does, which he never does. But he says he can. And this is just how they kind of just like say anything. And they don't get held responsible or accountable for what they say. Because he never did point it out to the court and he got in no trouble for telling the court he could point it out. He said, building on that further, the court claimed or mentioned in part that me, I, BJ, has been redacting some of her recent videos or redacting information in some recent videos. No, I provided examples to the court from the first months that I made videos and the court saw them. There are thousands of videos. I, I just disagree. I don't think there's thousands. I think there might be dozens. I would be shocked if there were hundreds, but he's here again. It's just anything that they need to say, anything they need to say to keep the abuse going is apparently what they will do. Thousands of videos that have been posted, your honor. The percentage that has been redacted is incredibly minimal. Well, what a good lawyer he is. Thousands of videos posted. The percentage that I redacted is incredibly minimal. So somehow he was able to arrive at the percentage of redactions without being able to produce to the court a single solitary example. Not one. Not one. 
but there's thousands of videos and only a very small percentage were redacted. So none of y'all could find one, two, five, ten examples. Again, like I said earlier, even if they could find an example of an address, they would have another, they would have all kinds of other burdens because they would have to show that I actually made a private address public, which I have never done. The percentage that has been redacted is incredibly minimal. I don't know how, can y'all explain to me how psychic Ben Kanani arrived at the actual assertion? The percentage that I have redacted is incredibly minimal when he doesn't even know clearly how many videos that have been posted. He said, we cannot respond to this declaration that was issued as part of this reply, but all of the facts issued there are disputed. We can provide examples that demonstrate for each one. Okay, this is another thing. It's like, I don't believe you. He said, we can provide examples that for each one example of redacting, there's at least five to 10 where there are no redactions of the information, not only of Lima, but also of her family members because there were thousands of videos prior. Thousands of videos prior to what? Like he's just spewing words out. There's five to 10 examples they're going to show where there's no redaction. So why didn't y'all put five to 10 examples in the back of your declaration? They just, in my opinion, in my opinion, they just wanted to fluster and overwhelm and confuse the judge with these heinous and outrageous allegations like that I had posted thousands of videos with their address in it with no evidence. And they wanted to say, but your honor, we have the evidence. We're saving it up. We're saving it. That don't even make sense. It's just abuse in my opinion. He's saying we need to get a chance to demonstrate or play this for the court. And what I really think is going on, they just want to get me in court to get these demonic clowns on the stand so that they can disparage me, commit libel and uh, defamation against me with the litigation privilege. They want to probably have a camera crew come in and film the whole thing, maybe make a commissioned documentary out of it or something. I don't really know. But I think the whole point isn't to win this case. The whole point is to abuse me, to make me suffer, to harm me. In my opinion, this is just my opinion, which I'm still allowed to give. It is the only thing that makes sense. In my opinion, we need a chance to demonstrate or play this for the court so the court can then see. We need a chance to make BJ have to fly back out to California, watch all these YouTube videos that are all protected speech, just to end up at the same conclusion, I win, you lose, there was no harassment. Like, it's just a big power money play. It's just a big money play, in my opinion. Thank you, Riley. What is it? People in comments, this currently actively being litigated. So please, yes, thank you. Even after it's not being litigated anymore, at any time, before, after, during, if you're time traveling, before. Do not engage with these people. Respect their actual legitimate privacy, but public records, I'm so sorry that I keep having to tell y'all. Public records are not private. I'm just so sorry they are not. And even though a lot of these, a lot of this information is public and any of y'all can go and find it right now, if you have an internet connection, I still have gone above and beyond to redact addresses, other types of information. That is public. That is public because it's in public records. But I have not shared a lot of that, most of it, almost really, almost any of it. If it's an address and a phone number, my general practice is going to be to redact. It is. Okay. <laughs> and thank you for the super chat. <laughs> exactly. Don't. And if anybody's doing it, y'all should be facing the full consequences of your actions. I don't condone it. I don't encourage it. Yep. Yep. I still can't believe and refuse to believe anyone from here. No, it's same. Same.
Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, we need a chance to abuse BJ more. I mean, uh, demonstrate or play this for the court. Okay. I saw the court was about to say, so then the judge steps in. Okay, I just want to say one thing, the judge says, because respondent, that's me. One of her arguments is that in her declaration, she says that the information was in the post. Uh, in her declaration, she says the information was in post. The personally identified, okay, she says the personally identifying information was in the post, but that the posts themselves do not support that statement in her declaration. So I would have expected to see some posts. And then Lima's attorney said, I'm sorry, I just didn't understand what the court just said. And the court said, okay, I'll repeat it. So one of BJ's arguments is that Lima's statement in her declaration that personally identifying information was included in posts. One of my arguments is, okay, but that was not supported by the actual post. What I just said earlier, right? The thing she included as the tweet that allegedly showed that I started an alleged rumor that her and Adam 22 were in some type of bleep you all relationship. The, the evidence she showed for that was a tweet that had nothing to do with her, basically. And so I said, you know, in my declaration that among other, like there was a ton of exhibits like that. It's like, there's nothing that doesn't show that that's not proof of that. That's just a picture of me or whatever. Right. So the court says that's one of BJ's arguments. So, and I would have expected to see Lima show some evidence, some other evidence where BJ did, you know, do this stuff or whatever. So I would expect it to see that. Okay. But I want to let you finish your argument, the judge said. He says, uh, Lima's lawyer, thank you. I'll happily react to that. Again, we could have taken the same declaration. So he's still somehow stuck on the idea that there was proof of this alleged doxing, intentional doxing, uh, somehow in the, in the evidence. But, um, but it wasn't. I don't know why. I don't know if he really thinks this or if he's just trying to law I really don't know but he was mistaken he said again we could have put the same declaration that was a part of that original petition and attached it or refi refiled it but that would have been duplicative and all of that is still in the record the entire slap motion is based on that declaration so that's evidence that we can and the court should listen to but the court already said that he did read that and sh there's no evidence of what she's saying in that either but here's Kanani well you didn't look at the write papers. And the judge is like, I looked at all of the papers. And he's like, but you should have looked at the first one. And he's like, I did. And what BJ is saying is right. You didn't really give the evidence like that was required for a lot of this stuff. Okay. Going further, your honor, the amount of harassment that has come directly at respondents direction. Huh. <laughs> He accidentally uh, told on himself because y'all know they accidentally tell on themselves. Hold on. I need to turn my um, notifications on like whatever. What's it called? Like don't disturb. Do not disturb. Okay. Going further, the amount of harassment that has come. Oh, no. Sorry. Respondent's direction. I can't read. All right. Going further, your honor. The amount of harassment that has come directly at BJ's direction has increased as of late. I have never directed any harassment toward Lima, as y'all all know. I'm sure if they got all these witnesses that could testify, a lot of y'all could testify too. That I've never encouraged harassment to anyone, including Lima, even especially Lima, because I know they have a tendency to lie and make stuff up about people. So I've never, ever directed any, and not even a comment, not even a follow-up. Okay. But here's lies in court. The amount of harassment that has come directly at my direction toward Lima has increased. That's just false. It's a false statement. It's false. In the last few weeks alone, especially in the last few weeks when there was a temporary restraining order against my speech, that's just false. More, more lies. But they like it. They're comfortable lying, it seems. To me, in my opinion, it's abusive tactics. I mean, I would expect people who do file abusive lawsuits to be abusive types. So it's not a surprise in my opinion. In the last few weeks alone, Lima has been approached by individuals who she had no contact with previously. Random, random 
random anonymous individuals. Unspo it's like the literally the lawyer is basically a bot account. Well, I've spoken to some individuals who have said some things. Put it in the record. You had three months in the past few weeks. Well, you should have filed the declaration for the court to see it because I don't think it's true, actually. Um, they're prepared to testify, whatever. No basis in reality. They're trying to gaslight me and make me seem crazy because that's another one of the things they love to do in court, make you seem like you're insane. Just last night, just yesterday, Lima's lawyer says, um, or over the weekend, I don't even know. I, I didn't even bother to check the dates before spewing this out in court. But just over the past couple of days, BJ posted that she reported Lima for sex trafficking and she posted this online another untrue statement. There's no evidence for this. And I didn't do that. So that's just not true. More lies just to try and get the judge to let them abuse me. Just another round, just another few rounds of abuse, another few rounds of torture twist in my arm. Basically, I don't know, black extorting me. I really don't even know because this is malicious prosecution without a doubt, without a doubt, especially whenever you add it up with Brian Scott Kuchar colluding in this case, and Lima colluding in his case, in my opinion, from my understanding, from the way I see it, in my opinion. Her lawyer said, after this lie, she claims to be an edutainer, edutainer of sorts, which I believe her lawyer claimed it was educational and comedic content. Yeah, I am. Legal edutainer. Yes, that's, that's what I am. First of all, if it's educational, it's meant to be true. Mm, have you seen what they're doing in the public schools right now, Kanani? I know you have. Uh, it's a fact. If it's comedic, it's meant to be satirical, in which case it might not be true. You see the NPC robots, they're telling themselves poor things. The man cannot imagine a reality where there's like multi dimensions to a person. It's either everything she says got to be true or everything she says got to be funny. And if something's funny, it can't be true. That's the, that's what he's standing up saying in court. Sometimes I say true things based on facts, based on records. I show you all the records and I show you how to get them. Sometimes I say my opinion. Sometimes I say jokes. It's like very common in the commentary community on YouTube. I would say like 80% or more of commentary YouTubers are sometimes saying true, th true things, sometimes saying jokes, sometimes it's comedic. I'm pretty sure you know what you're getting into when you look around here. There's floating, sparkling cotton candy. It's just opinions. <laughs> look at the scrolly bar that's been on many videos. And there's some facts. But even if it's facts, only fact I'm saying is it was written in a public record. So y'all tell me what's the truth. Because I don't know. I don't know. The notion that this is something that individuals can simply, you know, look at and will not cause harm. Y'all looking at my stuff is going to cause harm. That's just hilarious. Please. Legitimate public interest. She's going after. She has no basis for the very, very egregious. He's got to get the double, double. Very, 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 very egregious claims that she's making, which are continually causing harm. I, I mean, but it's just so vague. She has no basis for the very, very egregious claims, but you don't know, you don't claim what those claims are. It's just like, just vague, scary speech to make the judge let them continue abusing me. He don't even know how many times she's had to live. They, sorry, how many times she's had to move. They could not get their story straight before trial, before this hearing, apparently. She's had to move two times within the last year. Oh, oh, oh three, three times, three, three times within the last year. Um... And that's why we need to present this evidence. Well, if you have to move because someone shares your address, then I need to move because Lima shared my address. That's that's what they say. The videos cannot be attached to a declaration. Yes, they can. Screenshots and transcripts can. Your Honor, we describe them in detail, but you don't. You don't give the evidence that I've done this. Oh, it's just aggravating. I hate being lied about. Don't lie about me. Huh. Furthermore, much of the argument that I made is based on the notion that the two cases, the defamation, the other slap suit in New Jersey, the other abusive lawsuit that she filed in New Jersey, and this current abusive lawsuit in California are essentially the same. Her lawyer says, but I would point to one very, very large difference within the CHR, within large difference, he's going to say. 
uh, BJ's claims can still be 100% true, but that still allows for a restraining order. I think they were trying to argue on the facts ain't defamation matter, but this has nothing to even do with facts. A lot of the stuff is my opinion. A lot of the stuff is jokes. And a lot of the stuff, there's just simply no evidence that I said it or I provided evidence that I didn't do that. So it's like, <clears throat> I think he's just trying to argue like the facts ain't defamation side of things. I think he might've got confused or something. The notion that BJ can say whatever she wants without consequence is what she is doing. And she's already threatening to do. That's not true. Mm -mm, nope. 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 You misunderstand either intentionally or accidentally. I never said I could say whatever I want. I am actually very careful about what I say. And what I say is always do not contact anybody mentioned in this video. I do not condone or support harassment, hate, mean comments. I Actually, I tell y'all don't even go follow them. Don't even go check up on it. Yes, investigate, look into things, but don't contact people and harass them. So this man is trying to make it seem like I'm like standing on top of a building and like screaming to people to start a riot or something, which is just not what I'm, I'm very reasonable. I've never, ever, 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 ever encouraged anyone to harass anybody ever. Just in the last couple days, she's saying I'm going to post many, many, many more videos. I am. I am because it is my right to do so, but I'm not going to do anything illegal. I'm not going to do anything harmful. I'm going to post my opinion. And now I'm going to post my personal firsthand experience of the abuse that I have suffered under at the hands of BAM's former guardian, Lima Mora Takali Yeremovich, Yeremovich, whatever her name, name is today. At this point, the notion that petitioner, me, uh, sorry, Lima, has not even presented minimal merit or evidence, uh, whatever, is contradictory. Okay. So he's basically, this like little whiny like rat is trying to argue that because somebody granted a temporary restraining order based on fabrications and things not supported in any way in reality, not based in reality at all, a fantasy that Lima made up in her head. She made a fantasy up in her head, submitted it to a court full of fantasies and false statements. And the court didn't get to hear my side of it, didn't get to see the full context. So out of an abundance of caution, that court said, okay, for the time being, stop posting till we can get to the bottom of it. Well, now here we are to get to the bottom of it. And little Kanani is going, no, mm -mm. the other judge said we could have the temporary one. So you got to let us have the permanent one. Hmm. And that's just simply not, that's just simply not how it works. It's just simply, I don't know. Again, maybe he's stupid, but maybe, it's, maybe he knows exactly what he's doing. You know what I mean? Who knows? I don't know. I can tell you one thing. He was very grouchy that he lost. Lima went through each individual element of whatever this is, statue, provided multiple exhibits. Yeah, but they didn't support her statements. It might as well have been the menu price of the Cheesecake Factory. It was just not relevant. I don't want to misspeak that. Some judicial officer granted the temporary one. And, you know, we provided a declaration. And uh, he claims that the public records that I got are not public records, which they are. So I don't know how he got so confused on that. Maybe he needs to go back to law school. I'm really not sure. All of this information, we need to flush out how I received it. I showed the court how I received all the information. I actually provided evidence. That's what you do when you make statements in court. I showed the judge a picture of the Tulsa, Oklahoma portal. <laughs> I showed the judge a picture of exactly where we got. We already flushed it out, Benjamin. <sighs> Again, something she's allowed to post or that's not confidential because just two weeks ago, again, I was not posting about Lima two weeks ago. No, I was not. There was a post by a follower uh, that, again, said she was approached by an individual asking and being prepared to testify at trial that responded, directed her to make this post. Where's the evidence for that? Where's the declaration for that? There isn't one. It's just hearsay. Uh, well, just the other week, Lima was approached by someone claiming to be a follower. We didn't bother, you know, checking the veracity of that or anything like that. But she claimed to be a follower and she's claiming BJ directed her to, to make a post. OK, well, where's her declaration and why y'all had three months or I guess in the past few y'all had weeks, according to your own admission, to tell the court about it. And now you're just vaguely bringing it up here in court, not telling a name, not telling what the post is. No. 
is just to abuse me, in my opinion. And this post, even in the last two weeks, has triggered. Oh, yeah. Okay. They're so worried about Dahlia Takali's privacy. And look what they put out here in open court. I'm not going to read it. Uh, uh, my posts in the last two weeks, in the last two weeks, my posts have tri triggered another psychological breakdown on behalf of Dahlia. Dahlia has had another psych breakdown. And the psych breakdown was definitely my fault, even though she had been mentally hospitalized 60 times two years before I knew she existed. And this is what they're trying to, they're trying to blame every problem that ever existed in their life on me because they're scapegoater narcissists, in my opinion, who are using the legal system to abuse me because I don't report kindly or favorably on things that they do and because I have expressed criticism and that is my opinion. It is incredibly difficult to see how this sort of behavior is protected. Well, what, what sort of behavior? You provided no evidence. None. Your Honor, the girl who had mental health problems before BJ ever learned she existed and she accused her mother of sex trafficking and nobody ever did anything to validate or investigate those claims. The girl with a lot of mental health problems before BJ knew she existed. Now it's BJ's fault for someone else's post causing, you see like this, this is such a narcissistic move. Like trying to make me feel morally responsible. And y'all remember when they were already blaming me for Bam Margera's death as well? You're trying to kill my, my fucking brother. Just don't do that. Why do these sociopaths and then and then Jess Margera said, I'm going to kill his parents one foot in the ground, whatever he said. If something happens to them, it's going to be my fault. What are these deranged lunatics talking about? I have been very extremely clear. Do not contact anybody that I mention in my videos. If you do, that's on you and you ought to face the legal consequences because you might also be a deranged lunatic. I don't know what's unclear about that, but it's like they really want to pin somebody's death on me. And it's almost like, what are y'all planning? You planning for something to happen to Bam? You planning for something to happen to April and Phil? You planning for something to happen to Dahlia? Because I can guarantee you one damn thing. If something happens to him, it wasn't my fault. No, I don't condone. It's egregious that they're even making this types of allegations. I do know Amanda Rab did die in their care, which is a totally separate issue, but that's neither here nor there. It is incredibly difficult to see how this sort of behavior is protected with no evidence. Uh, information is incredibly, he likes to, he gets hung up on like he has a few words. Incredible, incredible. Now he's saying I committed a crime, which I did not. If the court finds this behavior, what behavior? Never defined it. Who knows? Just dog whistle, dog whistle. Uh, hasn't happened, then okay. BJ just had to spend a whole lot of money for no reason and continuously get abused for the next several years by us. Then okay, no harm, no harm to her. Except the abuse. But the fact that Lima didn't provide evidence, that shouldn't bear on your decision today. Basically, that's what this man's trying to say. Uh, then my lawyer stands up. Your Honor, the only thing I would say is that we are here today for hearing. Everything that the Benjamin Kanani has said beyond what is in his papers is speculation and inadmissible hearsay. So all this crap he's trying to talk about today is new. Okay. If there was evidence of continuing harassing con continuing harassing conduct, that evidence should have been presented to the court, my lawyer said. We're here for this. So if there's harassing evidence, they should have told you about it. That's when they had the time to do it. That's when they should have done it. And they had plenty ample time. Request to continue the hearing should have been made. He could have even said, I request to... Look, Your Honor, I just got a whole bunch of new evidence. I got to prepare it for trial, so we need to push the hearing off. My lawyer even said he could have asked for that. There has been no linkage, my lawyer said, whatsoever with respect to any alleged follower of me and any threat to petitioner. No linkage whatsoever. And that's the bottom line. My lawyer said, you're correct, Judge. I reviewed the uh, uh, very meticulously. My lawyer said, I looked for some evidence of an address. And I saw no evidence of any personal address of petitioner in the papers of the original declaration. I have very, my client, me, I, I very meticulously made efforts to redact information that was contained in public documents, blurring out addresses. I've been very proactive in doing that, my lawyer said. I would indicate to the judge, that the time for presenting this evidence has come and gone. 
Your Honor was correct in his assessment, I believe, with respect to the public nature and the public interest involved here. In our country today, my lawyer said, there is no more compelling public interest, uh, no more compelling public interest issue than mental health. That's what my lawyer said. All of BJ, that surprise witness, BJ investigates commentary has been based upon the mental health issues that caused petitioner Lima to be found to be a limited public figure in the New Jersey case. We have a situation where me, I have never met Lima until today. There's never been any contact between me and her husband. There's never been speculation of any followers. Oh, sorry, specification. So my lawyer's saying they didn't even specify which follower. They didn't even bother to do that, which follower they're talking. They're saying a follower, some random follower. Y'all, I have 140,000 something followers on BJ Investigates and I have like 86,000 on that surprise witness. I have 28,000 on Instagram. I cannot be held responsible for every single thing that somebody does because they clicked a follow button. That is asinine, absurd obscene, stupid even. So my lawyer's like, okay, they're just saying some vague follower. What do you mean? They haven't specified to this follower. There've been no specification of any investors. What do you mean on investors here? The time to present those arguments was today, your honor. Those declarations, the time for that was today. What do you mean they want to do evidence? Why didn't you give it already? My lawyer said I would indicate that petitioner Lima, if this court does sustain its tentative ruling, so if the court dismisses all of this, Lima still has the ability to proceed with her New Jersey action. That's already still ongoing all the way across the country, which is where she sued me in the first place. She should have just stayed over there. This is me ad lib, and y'all can read what he actually said here. Nothing, my attorney said, that is determined here today is going to prevent Lima from getting uh you know, justice for any perceived grievances that she may have in that other case. My lawyer said I would point out to the judge the request for judicial notice that we filed in support of our motion that was set forth in the New Jersey action, which was filed August of 2022. And in that petition, oh, pardon me, in that complaint, paragraph three, the claim that Lima's home address was identified, no evidence was presented. Okay. So this is good. My lawyer cited the New Jersey case and he said, your honor, not only did she not give you any evidence in this case of the address being shown, but also in the New Jersey case, like the, the, there was no evidence presented. So it's like, where's this evidence? He says, paragraph nine, there's references to BAM, 13 references, Amanda Rabb, Paragraph 18 represent, references alleged criminal acts and dishonesty engaged in uh, by Lima or me or whatever. Paragraph 19, um, Lima said she needed to move. Paragraphs 20 and 91, all the way through 111, are all of the alleged damages to petitioner's business. So my lawyer is just showing the judge all the different ways that Lima already sued me for this crap in New Jersey, and she could still keep doing her little appeals and things over there. There's really no reason to keep this going in California. It's the same crap. My lawyer said, so we have a situation here, Your Honor, where Lima can proceed with her New Jersey action if she feels that um, she's been harmed. The exact same issues are raised, and if the motion is denied, respond my First Amendment rights, which have been impacted significantly and deleteriously, will be chilled, which is the whole point of this anti-slap thing. And the consequences to me of that conduct will be devastating. So we respectfully submit, Your Honor, that the tentative ruling should be adopted as the ruling of the court, and I appreciate the court's time. Then Lima's lawyer comes in and says, no, 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 no. The New Jersey action is completely different. It's not. It's the same. It's a slap lawsuit in two different states. Uh, Petitioner Lima here is not asking that I never be. Listen to this sneaky snake. Lima's not asking that BJ can never speak about or talk about Lima. Mm -mm. Lima's just asking only that BJ can never post about her ever online. That's what they want. And then he goes without some sort of evidence, which. I've never ever made, what is that? 
say these things. She can't post about it publicly without some sort of evidence. And this sounds exactly like what Larry Deridani at Winston and Strawn was trying to tell me. I, you don't want to post these things without evidence, do you? My opinions? I don't want to speculate. I mean, a lot of my opinions are based on evidence. And I do show you all the evidence. Like, for example, one of the pieces of evidence is Amanda Rabb's autopsy report that clearly demonstrates and shows that her cause of death was marked as cardiac arrhythmia, right? That's some evidence. There's some. Um, come to find out, Lima had said her cause of death was marked as a seizure disorder. That wasn't true. So when I said that wasn't true, the some sort of evidence just for Ben Kanani, because I know he's going to watch this video, is the autopsy report. I didn't just make it up that Lima lied, in my opinion. Mm -mm. My opinion is based on the coroner's report, a public record. I don't know. It's just, I don't know what this is even saying. What they want me to do is never be able to talk about these people again because they want to continue on with their merry way without consequences for what they have done publicly. But too bad, so sad. The court made orders as it did, blah, blah, blah. Again, the court has the original petition. I, I don't know why he keeps harping on that because the, the court definitely addressed it. Okay. He's saying if the court were to grant, if the court were to strike this whole thing off because of BJ's request, um, it would be a big problem because another judge already said that a temporary restraining order was needed. So there would be contradictory rulings. And the court's like, uh, no, <laughs> no, there wouldn't. He says, first of all, the special motion to strike could not have even been filed in the temporary restraining order request. Because, and what he was about to say was something along the lines of, because BJ had no notice that it was being filed. It was filed. Nobody told, nobody gave her the opportunity to even file this anti-slap thing. There's no, there were no, he was about to say all that, but he didn't even get to it because Kanani interrupted him rudely. And that's all that, that and that's all there is here. So that's why we're saying it should go with, and the judge is like, okay. But it can be filed against the petition itself to preclude an evidentiary hearing. And if you can point to where personally identifying information was included in a post that was attached to the declaration submitted in report, that was attached to the declaration submitted in support of the petition. The judge is like, where's your evidence? You didn't give it to me. She literally, here's her, here's a her lawyer. She literally encourages individuals to investigate. Yeah, it's very, it's very common. And I tell them not to harass and I tell them not to stalk or contact. Investigation through public records is like the cornerstone of the whole thing, buddy. The court's like, all right, what exhibit B, E, E, Edward, regarding she encourages individuals to investigate respondent. Uh, and exhibit B has a number of posts about her family and only continues to grow. She literally posted entire videos about her sister. Yeah, like they say stuff that's supposed to make you feel like you did something wrong because they want to get you. Yes, I did. And I'm going to post more videos because it's all based on public. It's all public. And in one, a lot of those videos, entire videos, I do discuss how Dahlia Takali reported to the Tulsa Police Department that she was being sex trafficked by her mother. I reported to the public that we need investigation into those allegations that has not happened. It's a massive, massive issue of public interest. Again, I can go through the paperwork, but I don't want to bother finding evidence to submit to you before we continue abusing this woman. We don't need evidence to keep abusing her, right, Your Honor? That's basically what's going on here. The court, well, I don't have to take judicial notice. I mean, look, look, there's sufficient evidence for purposes of an opposition to an anti-slap motion. I'm not saying that there's sufficient, uh, interrupts the judge again, right? But there have been, again, the notion that uh, BJ is claiming to be, I don't know, funny or educational or investigating a crime. She constantly changes her position based on what suits her. Well, I pretty much just tell y'all what I'm doing the whole time. It's not, I don't really change the position too much, girl. There are so many exhibits more we could have attached, but we didn't bother to present evidence for this stuff. We just wanted you to take our word. We just wanted you to take our word for it, Your Honor. Uh, individuals are contacting. How do 
people even know who the business investors are? Is that public knowledge? Because I remember we had to argue in New Jersey over whether or not the investors should be made public. I was under the impression it was private who's the investors. But here they are talking about people were able to contact the investors. They got investors in the court looking exactly like Luke Rochelle. They're kind of being out in the open with these investors. So are they private? Or are they not? If they're private, how on earth did anybody contact the investors? Hmm? Things to think about. Things to think about. We are just asking the court to allow us to uh, abuse BJ. I mean, to present our evidence. Because without that, Lima could theoretically refile. So a threat for more malicious prosecution. Telling the judge they're going to pitch a fit if they don't get what they want. They're going to throw a fit, not only appeal this one, but refile, and they're going to continue their course of abuse, harassment, and malicious prosecution. That's what he's saying right here, in my opinion. That's how I, but I don't know. They say my beliefs aren't based in reality, so maybe it's not based in reality. Who knows? I don't know. I have no idea. That's how I took it, in my opinion, in my world of my own, in my crystal palace, if you know what I mean. We're just asking the court to allow us, they just say stuff like just, too. We're just asking the court to allow us to extract hundreds of thousands of more dollars in litigation costs out of this poor abuse victim, me, at this point. If those posts exist, which they do, but you didn't provide evidence for, then the law still stands. And this isn't really true. He was saying this like he was so sure about it. I'm not going to get into the legal arguments on it, but it's not so cut and dry. I'll say that. You know, I don't want to waste this court's time. The court, right. I was going to say, even a one day, a one afternoon that could allow us to present that evidence in minutes because they want to get their film crew in there. I don't know why. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe the ARPA Film Festival has something. I don't know. I'm a conspiracy theorist. I don't know. All opinion, all First Amendment protected. There's so much of it. I think if the court were to see the evidence, if the court were to see the evidence that I didn't bother to provide so far, the court would not only find that it's, constitu it's not constitutionally protected speech, but that Lima has met her burden. And that this just isn't how it works. I mean, I'm not getting into all this crap, but the, the bottom line is just not how it works. The statute exists to protect victims of slap suits from enormous, gargantuan, or immense, I'm going to say these words so Benjamin can learn them and stop saying very, very huge, very, very big, um, they're supposed to protect victims of slap suits like me from egregious attorney's fees. I should not have to go all the way through a trial because Kanani couldn't bother to provide the correct or appropriate evidence to make his case. And that's what the statute says. Like I said earlier, I do have, um, I do have to get going. Um, <clears throat> I can make this, I can make this available to y'all. Later on, this is all the time that I did have for today. Um, but the basically the long and short of it was they didn't meet their burden. I met my burden. It seems like they're trying to hang their hat on if I ever posted any address ever, anytime ever, that's necessarily doxing, which is just frankly not true or not the case. Maybe they figured that out by now. Maybe this will all sort it out for them or whatever. But um, yeah, I won. And so uh, the next stage of the trial, the case, whatever, it's not trial or whatever. The next thing that's going to happen in this case in California is my attorneys are going to file a petition for their fees. That's when the, ju the judge, I think there has to be some type of hearing on it. I'm really not exactly sure, but that will be getting put in motion soon. In the New Jersey case, uh, we do have a hearing in a few days. It's not a hearing. I keep saying the wrong words. It's not a hearing. It's a conference amongst only the lawyers. So I won't be there. It'll be the lawyers and the judges. Thank you, Riley. Um, we do need a case journal. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, yeah, no. I mean, listen, one day when this is all said and done, huh, I'll talk about my opinion on their litigation strategy, but that's going to be in several years from now, I guess. Um, yeah, so I won. They lost. The next thing is the lawyers and the judge are going to talk on sometime next week, and I don't really know what that's about. Um, the judge just wanted to talk to the lawyers. I really don't know why. But um, where that case stands is it was dismissed, and the court dismissed it with something called without prejudice, um, allowing Lima to fix her restraining. Or I mean, uh, it's so hard to keep up. Her faulty 
filing. She didn't really prove her point. She had to also show like a knowing and willing type of element there too, where I like maliciously did something. Thank you, Riley. Oh my gosh. Someone take Riley's device. Um, thank you so much. I will keep up the, I will, I will not stop. Um, yeah, no, I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of been like, it's been a rough road. It's been a rough road because I wasn't aware of how comfortable people could be just lying. I really wasn't. I wasn't aware at how comfortable people could be committing perjury, in my opinion, saying stuff that's just wholly false and saying that they know it to be true under penalty of perjury is just something I never realized people could do like easily like that. And throughout the last several litigation rounds, I have learned that people will not only in court, you know, online, just make stuff completely up just to lie and to spread disinformation. And so it kind of does kind of start to make you question your reality a little bit because it is a form of abuse. It's like a gaslighting tactic to make you just not even know what's real, what's not real. Um, it has been difficult because it's annoying, but it has not been impossible. And I'm going to keep fighting because I'm not going to be somebody letting people abuse me with slap suits. Thank you, Shannon. BJ for no, no, but thank you for the super chat. I have no desire to be president, please, for the love of God. Absolutely not. They would, I would not last long if you know what I mean. Uh, no, 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 thank you. <laughs> Y'all are funny. Oh, wait, who? Hold on. Uh, hold on. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Anyway, so let's see. Can I understand late in game two? But no, do I do it? Wholesome bubble. Yeah, it's like people do stuff they want to do. Uh, for the out of the love of their out of the goodness of their heart, and it's like they got people out here that are just lying, lying comfortably. It's like, girl, I don't even know. Anyway, uh, thank you to everyone for the super chats. And I appreciate everyone liking and sharing. If you haven't, do go check out last night's BJ Investigates. We did a P. Diddy video. And it is, in my opinion, it's really good. So go check that out. If you haven't seen me reading through my declaration from this case, and it's something that interested you, I would, I would say I should go back to yesterday's live. I don't remember what the name of it was, but it was something about... Uh, oh, Mark Wahlberg, I think. Was it that? Yes. It was the Mark Wahlberg and other things, I think. I don't remember now. I don't remember now. I think it was yesterday. Leave in the, leave in the comments, but go watch that. Anyway, I have to run. I have to go do things, but in the meantime, facts ain't defamation. Love you, mean it. Okay, bye.